Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video, I'm going to be going through 100 free-to-play tips and tricks in Pokemon Go. So for those of you who don't already know this, I've actually been 100% free-to-play for the past 5 years in Pokemon Go, ever since the release of the game. So I've learned quite a bit since then. I also made a video very similar to this back in 2019, and I've been getting comments ever since to make an update video, and just given everything that's been going on lately in Pokemon Go, especially regarding Niantic's poor communication and just handling of the game, a lot of players have been moving towards a free-to-play play style, and I figured now it's kind of the best time to work on this video. So yeah, it's been a long time coming, but I hope you guys do find it helpful and informative. As always, if you could, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button down below. Really worked hard on this one. And if you want to see more Pokemon Go videos like this, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, what exactly is the definition of a free-to-play player in Pokemon Go? So in simple, it's just somebody who doesn't buy Pokecoins from the in-game shop. The only way that they earn Pokecoins is through gyms, and that's it. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to get into the details of ticketed events because that's kind of a gray area because you're paying for an experience, not necessarily like you're paying for items or you're paying for Pokecoins. And then you also have surveys as well, which some people do. I personally don't do surveys, so yeah, I don't know. You guys can debate that in the comments section if you want but we're just gonna move on from here. Now with that being said, I'm sure some of you can imagine that this playstyle is going to be very time consuming and you really have to focus in on efficiency like maximizing your star pieces, your lucky eggs, etc. So tip number one is going to be to prioritize your bag and storage upgrades. This is definitely a given because when you start off in the game, you only have 300 Pokemon storage and 300 bag space. But of course the next question is, which one should you upgrade first? Bag space. Definitely bag space. Upgrade that one first because you can hold on to more Pokeballs. And if you can hold on to more Pokeballs, you can definitely catch more Pokemon. You gotta be kind of strict when it comes down to what Pokemon you keep in your storage. Like, don't have a Living Dex early on. Don't go for any sort of collections. Like, keep your best IV Pokemon and really just try to build out your account in the beginning. Ideally, in the beginning, I would recommend focusing on getting about 150 to 200 Pokeballs in your inventory. The rest of your space you can definitely divide up amongst potions and uh, revives and whatnot. Um, but yeah, about 150 to 200 Pokeballs, really just focus on catching in the beginning, that's like definitely a priority. And uh, from there, you know, continue to upgrade as you can, but 150 to 200 Pokeballs will keep you set for a while, and then you can kind of go and restock whenever you need to. The next tip is going to be to clean your Pokemon storage regularly. I mean, I cannot stress this enough. As a free-to-play player, you can't just buy Pokemon storage whenever you feel like it. That's a huge difference. As a pay-to-play player, you can just upgrade your Pokemon storage whenever you feel like it. The max Pokemon storage in the game is currently 4,000, so yeah, you definitely have a lot of room to stockpile whatever Pokemon you want to, but as as a free-to-play player, you can't do that, so make sure you clean your Pokemon storage on a regular basis. I actually have a video that goes over how to do this, so I'll link it in the top right corner, as well as in the description below. I'm probably going to have too many videos linked in the top right corner, so just go to the description for most of them. I'm just going to say that right now. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my advice there when it comes down to Pokemon storage, especially in the beginning, guys. Like, when you're building up your Pokemon and you're getting so many good IVs and you're getting so many good Pokemon for PvP potentially, you know, you really need to make sure that you're cleaning out your Pokemon storage of all the junk that you don't need. The next tip I have for you guys is going to be to save your additional Pokecoins for Ultra slash Adventure Boxes in-game. I previously said to prioritize your bag and storage upgrades first. The rest of your coins can go towards getting some pay-to-play items, or I don't know if I'd call them pay-to-play items, but you can get like premium raid passes, incubators or super incubators, uh, lucky eggs, star pieces. This will all kind of be in the Ultra slash Adventure Boxes, and again, this is going to cost 1480 coins. To actually accumulate about 1500 Pokecoins is going to take you about a month's worth of just getting getting your daily 50 from gym, so I don't expect you guys to honestly reach this, especially if you don't have a solid gym strategy. Um, but, you know, overall, I would say just stockpile as many coins as you can, especially once you feel comfortable with your Pokemon storage and backspace, like, there is no need to go for the max upgraded space. I am personally sitting on about 2200 Pokemon storage and about 1800 bag space, and I've been playing for the past five years. I feel like that's enough for me right now. I'm currently working on upgrading my bag a little bit more, um, but overall, Pokemon storage has definitely been solid. I've been holding onto like a ton of extra Pokemon. I have like a shadow collection too, so I definitely have things that I could go through and delete. Um, but again, essentially just what I'm trying to say here is that once you kind of feel comfortable, like you have enough Pokemon storage, you don't have to go through and clean it out so often, or you have enough bag space to where you can hold down like a decent amount of Pokeballs and other items, then you're probably fine. Like, you know, you can save the rest of the coins to get some of the more premium items in game. Um, you know, I would say wait for a good deal though. Some of the Ultra Boxes and Adventure Boxes aren't always that good. 
and uh, you definitely want to wait until you get something really, really nice. Additionally, on top of Ultra and Adventure boxes, I also want to mention Community Day boxes with the Elite TMs. These are definitely really, really worth it. These ones cost a little bit less, about 1280 Pokecoins to buy a Community Day box. The reason why this is so good, especially if you guys just like have this amazing PvP Pokemon, but you don't have the legacy moveset for it. So we can use Cresselia as an example right now. So Grass Knot is a legacy move on Cresselia, which means that if you use a regular Charge TM, you can't actually roll Grass Knot. You have to use an Elite TM. These Elite TMs can definitely come in handy. Of course, this isn't the only way to earn Elite TMs in game. You can also earn Elite TMs uh, from PvP, essentially from each season. I've actually accumulated quite a bit and I've actually used um, two Elite TMs on Community Day Pokemon, Swampert and Venusaur. So don't ever feel bad if you want to use it on something like that. It's definitely worth it. Like they're top of the meta. Following that, we're going to talk about how to actually get your 50 Poke Coins. I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit more in a separate video, but essentially, you just want to drop into multiple gyms. That is the best way to secure 50 Poke Coins a day. I would recommend anywhere from about four to five gyms if possible. Now, for those of you who don't know, you actually get coins once you get kicked out and you can only get a max of 50 a day. So for example, if your Pokemon was in a gym for like 17 days, you're not going to get all those Poke Coins. You're only going to get a maximum of 50. And if you've already collected 50 a day, you're not even going to get the 50 from that Pokemon. So it's based on how many you get per day. And the time frame that you essentially need to hold in gyms is going to be about 8 hours and 20 minutes. So as long as at least one Pokemon stays in for 8 hours and 20 minutes, you're going to get your daily 50 once that Pokemon gets kicked out. The same can be said, you know, if you have a Pokemon in there for like 4 hours, another one for 5 hours, and they both get kicked out at the end of the day, you're still just going to get 50, and it's really as simple as that. I say simple, but it's actually a little bit more complicated. Like, staying in gyms is not the easiest thing in the world, which is why I'm going to dive into this a little bit more in detail in another video. But yeah, essentially that's it. Um, we're also going to talk about gym defenders and a strategy. Again, another a separate video coming up for that, and uh, we're going to go over that in detail, but... Solid gym defenders are really important. I'll give you guys a short list right now, some uh, pretty good gym defenders that you guys can use. Chansey, Blissey, Metagross, Togekiss, and Garchomp. So hopefully some of you guys have some Garchomp from the recent Calm Day. That'll definitely help you out. And again, Chansey and Blissey are MVPs. Those two are amazing. Next tip I have for you guys is going to be, if you can, communicate with rival teams and alternate. I actually know some people who do actually get this done properly. I personally can't. We have a spoofer problem where I live, so it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But if you guys can coordinate this, definitely try to rotate every eight hours. That way you guys can be getting your 50 coins every single day. This level of efficiency is uncommon though I will tell you that right now so following that our next tip is going to be to save your free pass and carry it over to the next day this is something that I've been utilizing since the beginning of raids in Pokemon Go like four years ago guys so basically you can only hold on to one orange free pass in your inventory at a time but this allows you to actually go into the next day with one already in your inventory and then you can still collect the one that you're supposed to get for that day so hopefully that does make sense again this is a great way to just utilize back-to-back -back raids and then if you also live in New Zealand and the US you guys get two free raid passes a day or I even get two free raid passes a day right now and uh, this will allow us to do back to back to back raids so we can do three raids in a row potentially which is amazing great for lucky egg maximization and on lucky egg maximization the next one that we have here is going to be to coordinate multiple friendships under one lucky egg if possible. There's definitely a wide range of strategies you guys can go through. I do recommend nicknaming your friends, especially the ones that are getting close to leveling up, whether that's best friends, ultra friends, great friends, doesn't really matter. Try to nickname them, that way you guys can just find them when you need to, uh, you know, go through those friendship bonuses. I have a video that goes over this in more detail, so again, I'll link that in the description below. I do recommend checking it out because there is an issue in game where you don't actually get the notification for the XP, and that means that you don't actually get the XP. Now, thankfully, I have found a work around to that so I definitely recommend watching that video as well but you can find all of that in the uh, description below. Now of course as a free-to-play player like I previously mentioned maximizing your resources maximizing your efficiency is definitely a top priority so I do recommend combining other actions with your lucky egg so if you're going to be doing raids and you're going to be doing friendship bonuses try to include some other stuff like catching, evolving, uh, quest experience, there's definitely tons of things there. Excellent throws give you 1000 experience per catch which is honestly phenomenal. This was actually a recent change in the game when we got the level cap increase to level 50, Niantic decided to make excellent throws 1000 experience per, so this is definitely something that I highly recommend taking advantage of, like, as 
especially as a free-to-play player, this is arguably one of the best ways to just get experience in-game, and you don't even have to have a lucky egg going. And for those of you who actually struggle with excellent throws, don't worry, I got you covered. Check out the video link in the description below. The next one is going to be Stacked Research. So Stacked Research is phenomenal, guys. You can actually stack up to 100 Pokemon counters in there, which is crazy. Like, that is so much Stardust, and that is so much experience, and it is a great way to honestly take advantage of those lucky eggs. So I do recommend doing that. I do recommend trying to stack as many research encounters as you possibly can. It's kind of hard to keep track of them. Like, you won't know if you have 100, but uh, whenever you kind of get up there, like, 50, 70 range, I'm sure you'll kind of have a decent idea. The next tip is going to be to add as many friends as you possibly can and send them gifts. The gifts limit to send is going to be 100, and then on that note, the next tip is going to be to open all of your daily gifts. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't actually take advantage of this, but uh, yeah, you can open up to 30 gifts a day. That was a permanent change after the COVID bonuses, so open your daily 30 gifts. Like, that is a great way to get Pokeballs, to get potions, revives, berries. Uh, what else do you get from it? You also get Stardust. Yeah, you get Stardust from opening gifts. How awesome is that? Now, on top of that, there's actually a really cool trick to get through your gifts even faster. So, as soon as you open the gift, that X button that you can usually click out to exit out of the screen, Go ahead and spam click that, and you can skip through the entire gift opening animation. This is really effective, guys, especially when you're opening 30 different gifts. You're going to go through this so much faster. Now, of course, before we dive any further, I want to give you guys another tip in terms of how to get friend codes in-game. So there's plenty of different ways to get friend codes. The top ones that I recommend are going to be through Reddit. There's tons of subreddits for friend codes. There's also Pokegenie raids. We're going to talk about Pokegenie a little bit later on in this video. There's Discord. There's Facebook groups. Heck, there's even Twitter at times like there are twitter threads where you guys can get some friend codes um i do recommend trying to know who you add if at all possible that way you guys can coordinate for the lucky egg uh, friendship bonuses but if not it's not that big of a deal you guys can honestly get a ton of friends through that at the very least get your daily gifts and while we're on the gift opening topic i also recommend trying to get seven kilometer eggs from your international friends so seven kilometer eggs are gotten from opening gifts from people I, you know that wasn't self-explanatory already um, but essentially, once they hatch, let's say for example somebody sent you something from Australia and you live in the US, that Pokemon is going to be from Australia. You can then trade that Pokemon as a distance trade with somebody locally, and you're both going to get three candy, the maximum amount of candy that you can get from the trade, and if you're above level 40, you both are going to get one extra large candy guaranteed. For distance trades, they just have to be a minimum of 100 kilometers away, and that's essentially how you can do that. But another benefit from actually doing this with international friends is that you can also work on your pilot medal, which requires a ton of distance. I think it's like a million distance for the gold medal, and then like 10 million distance for the platinum medal. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, it's going to take quite a bit of trading to get that. So international gifts will help you get there even faster. So we did touch on candy here a little bit in regards to distance trades. Another thing I want to mention in regards to rare candy is to use it on legendary Pokemon. I've talked about this previously in my other videos, but legendary Pokemon require 20 kilometers to get one candy when you walk it as your buddy, therefore making it the most valuable investment when it comes down to rare candy. I cannot tell you how many people do not know how to effectively use their rare candy in game, so in simple terms guys, try to always use your rare candy on legendary Pokemon. Especially as free to play players, like this is the optimal place to put your rare candy. Um, that being said though, you know, you could also do distance trades for legendary Pokemon, get that three candy per trade plus one extra large candy if you guys are level 40 or above. I also have a rare candy strategy, which I'm going to link in the description below. I really recommend checking out that video if you guys can. Again, all these videos will be linked in a playlist as well, so don't worry about it if you kind of forgot what I was going through here. Check out the playlist in the description below, everything is going to be there. Now following that, of course, we talked about this at the beginning of the video. You want to make sure that you're only using your star pieces, lucky egg incubators to the best of your ability you're maximizing them so ideally when do you want to use them I would recommend using them during events with bonuses like make sure that there's like a bonus going on like a triple stardust event or a double stardust event potentially I mean I feel like triple stardust is a better use of it um, triple experience you're also going to have other random events in game so I really do recommend paying attention to my breakdown videos on the channel I always do them at the start of every month and for example Bidoof was a really really good event that was four times catch experience that was like one of the best times to farm experience as a free-to-play player because you got 8,000 experience per excellent three and on the topic of events, I definitely recommend participating in Community Day. It is one of the best days to play Pokemon Go, period. You get six hours to play currently. In the past, it was three hours, but with the COVID bonuses, I mean, it's going to be six hours for now. Who knows if they'll change it to three in the future. 
regardless, always play through it. There's always some sort of bonus going on, whether that's like one fourth egg hatching distance or three times stardust or three times experience on catches. There's always something. Now with that being said, I also do recommend formulating a 30 minute grind loop when you're playing through Calm Day. I do have a video that goes over all the tips and tricks for Calm Day. I'm also gonna leave that in the description below. Surprise, surprise. Um, but uh, I do recommend focusing on that grind loop that is gonna be very crucial in terms of maximizing your efficiency that day. So yeah, that's kind of my go-to there. Um, on top of that, we're also gonna have incense that are three hours long on Calm Day. Now, a really cool tip here is that you can actually stack your incense up to 24 hours. So you can get free time afterwards if you pop your incense during Calm Day. This is actually an incredible strategy that a lot of people don't tend to utilize. So let's say for example, Calm Day is about to end, right? You can go ahead and drop a bunch of incense and now you're gonna have incense Pokemon for like the next who knows how many hours, right? Cause one incense gave you three hours of grind time. So yeah, you're honestly going to get a ton of value out of using your incense uh, before Calm Day actually ends, just to kind of stack them on top of each other. Really, really good advice right there, in my opinion. Um, on top of that, we're also going to have three hour lure modules. This is a great time to focus on your picnic or metal. So, you know, just go to a grind spot, drop lures at the beginning of Calm Day. There's gonna be tons of people playing there, which means that they're gonna be catching tons of Pokemon. This is arguably the best time to work on this metal specifically. So I really do recommend dropping your lures during Calm Day and just taking advantage of the fact that everybody's gonna be out playing. Moving on over to our next tip here, um, it's gonna be egg hatching sprees. So I've done this on the channel quite a few times um, and now that we have the three bonus egg slots uh, we can actually do this even more efficiently so there's four different variations that I'm gonna go over right now 12 times 10 kilometer eggs 9 times 10 kilometer eggs 12 times 12 kilometer eggs and 9 times 12 kilometer eggs so 12 kilometer eggs are what you get from beating the rocket leaders um, those actually will give you the most amount of stardust and the most amount of candy and actually have a decent egg pool right now uh, 10 kilometer eggs are also pretty good, you know, second most uh, candy and second most stardust when it comes down to it. If you guys utilize this, especially during an event with double stardust, you're gonna get a ton of stardust or even double candy. Like double candy or double stardust, best time to utilize a massive egg hatching spree. And like I previously mentioned earlier on in the video with your Poke coins, like once you get to a comfortable place with your bag and storage space, you can then use the rest of your coins to, for example, buy an adventure box and boom, now you got incubators for the egg hatching sprees, which is going to get you a ton of stardust and a ton of candy. Now, additionally, on top of that, another great way to use your star piece is going to be to use it at the end of the season rewards for Go Battle League. So let's say whenever season eight ends, uh, you're actually gonna get a ton of stardust if you were able to make it up to rank 20. And if you got even higher in the rankings, like let's say for example, you got all the way up to veteran, you're gonna get even more stardust. And I believe that goes all the way up to 100,000 stardust if you actually hit legend. So with the star piece, that's 150,000 stardust at the end of the season. Incredible. Like I understand that not many people are probably gonna make it to legend, but even if you make it to veteran or even ace, like you're gonna get a decent amount of stardust. Like it's totally worth dropping a star piece. And then you can also just do catches, like go through your stacked research or whatever, really maximize your star piece with those end of season rewards. And while we're on the topic of bonuses, let's talk about spotlight hours. There is a ton of amazing bonuses during spotlight hours. And I always cover this during my monthly breakdown. So if you guys need any sort of advice in terms of which ones are gonna be worth it, I highly recommend watching those every single month. But that being said though, let's go a little bit deeper into the bonuses for spotlight hours. So let's say we have the double experience on evolutions. So I highly recommend going for a massive evolution spree. You're gonna need about 140 Pokemon ready. And I would recommend these Pokemon. So 12 candy evolves are gonna be your optimal choice. Um, you can actually use this string. I'm gonna leave it on screen right now. Those are gonna be Caterpie, Weedle, Pidgey, Wurmple, Wizmer, and I believe P-Dove is gonna be the last one. Those are all 12 candy evolves, guys. Definitely take advantage of them. It is the best way to just get through those evolutions and get a ton of experience. I mean, people get anywhere from like 300 to 600,000 experience during that spotlight hour, so yeah. Definitely worth it. I mean, if you combine it with friendship bonuses too, man, you're gonna be pulling in like a million experience easy. Following that, I also recommend you have about 30 to 50 pineapple berries at all times, just for easy evolutions. Like if you see Wormpole in the wild, use a pineapple berry on it. If you see Pidgey, use a pineapple berry on it. And then also if you run into rare Pokemon, for example, like Dino, use a pineapple berry on that, definitely. 
So yeah, about 30 to 50 pineapple berries in your bag space is recommended. Now following that, the next spotlight hour I want to talk about is going to be the times two transfer for candy. Now I highly recommend making a search tag and tagging every single one of the Pokemon that you want to transfer during that hour, because odds are you're probably not going to remember which ones are going to be worth it. So, you know, just go through whatever you need candy on, you know, whatever you can hold on in your Pokemon storage and uh, transfer it during that spotlight hour. This is honestly one of the most beneficial spotlight hours out there, and it is a great way to take advantage of just getting double legendary candy or double candy on really anything that is just super rare in game. Now, a bonus tip that I can give you guys as well, one that I didn't write down here, is going to be to trade a Pokemon. So let's say you trade a legendary, right? Like you guys do like a swap between Dialgas. You can actually hold on to that traded legendary and you already got a candy from that trade or maybe even three candy depending on if you guys did a distance trade so you got three candy there and then you can save that dialga to transfer during the double transfer spotlight hour and boom you just got an extra two candy just like that potentially even an extra large candy with all of that as well so yeah that's really really solid especially for free to play players because we don't get candy that often for legendaries this is a great way, one of the best ways to utilize that. So as you guys can tell, the double transfer is definitely my favorite. Uh, but moving on over to the next spotlight hour tip here, I would highly recommend avoiding Pokemon with bad catch rates. So you might be wondering, well, like what Pokemon are those? Starter Pokemon. Starter Pokemon 100%. We recently just had Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander spotlight hours in Pokemon Go, and they were the worst. Like, even though I was using Ultra Balls and Raspberries, Bulbasaur was still breaking out. I do not recommend going through these spotlight hours. I mean, seriously, take advantage of the bonuses if you can, but playing through the actual spotlight hour, I do not recommend it. It'll exhaust your Pokeball supply. All right, moving on over to our next tip, do your daily Go Battle League sets. This is the easiest way to get free Stardust. And on that note, progressively work your way up to rank 20. Rank 20 is based on wins alone, so it has nothing to do with how many wins you get per set. And even in the earlier ranks, like honestly, it is so easy to move up. And uh, you progressively get more Stardust as you continuously work your way up to rank 20. So of course, at rank 20, additionally, you also get access to legendary encounters. I think I got a shiny Registeel and a shiny Regice, both from Go Battle League, so yeah. It definitely works, guys. It definitely works. Um, additionally, you also have Go Battle League Knights. So if you're ranked 20 and you're going to participate in Go Battle League Knights, which you have 100 battles to go through, 20 different sets, you can just top left, and top left just means quit the match, and you're still going to get a lot of Stardust. I think you get actually 3,100 Stardust just for going through a set in Go Battle League, so you don't even have to win anything. You get 3,100 Stardust per completion, and you have 20 different sets to go through. With a star piece, that is going to be insane gains. So yeah, definitely a really good tip I recommend right there. Now on top of all of that, you can also get some additional rewards as well if you battle with three different friends, or not even three different friends, just battle three times with a friend. Uh, throughout the day, you can either get free stardust or free rewards. Sometimes you end up getting both. Um, sometimes you get like Sinnoh stones from them. Uh, definitely worth doing it if you guys just want a little bit of extra rewards right there. And then additionally on top of that, you can also go through and battle a team leader as well for your first interview interaction with them for the day, assuming that you beat them, you're going to get some additional stardust from that battle, so that's actually pretty nice. Uh, next tip we have is going to be to catch everything. Again, we're talking about a lot of stardust here. Best way to get stardust in game, guys. You don't even have to have a lucky egg on or a star piece. So just catch everything. Like, you see a Pokemon, don't just shiny check it. Catch it. There's no reason not to. Get the extra experience. Get the extra stardust. That stuff does add up. We just talked about catching everything. Utilize the fast catch trick, especially the one with the AR method. Oh my god, I have a video going over this guys in detail, so if you need any help with that, I have right-handed and left-handed examples. I highly recommend checking it out. As always, linked in the description. <laughs> uh, on top of that, we also have the circle lock technique. This will allow you to get 100% accuracy with your throws. No surprise here, but the video link is of course going to be in the description as well. This is definitely one that I recommend learning how to do properly though. Like this helps immensely with catching legendary Pokemon. I cannot stress that enough. Following that, we're gonna have berry feeding in gyms, either remotely or or in person. If you drop a Pokemon in a gym, you can actually remote berry feed it. Um, you can feed the Pokemon surrounding you as well, which is really nice. So you have six potential Pokemon you could feed. There is a limit though to this, and I forgot to mention, you also get Stardust for feeding Pokemon berries in gym, so really nice benefit right there. You could only feed 10 berries per Pokemon 
every 30 minutes for a maximum of 10 Pokemon. So if you have two different Pokemon in gyms and both of those gyms are full, you can only feed 10 of those Pokemon and you can feed them up to 10 berries every 30 minutes. And while we're on the topic of gym defense, I would highly recommend saving up a decent amount of golden raspberries for defending the gym. This will actually heal up your Pokemon completely. So yeah, really, really recommend that. Don't always use your golden raspberries on trying to catch a legendary Pokemon. Like try and save those for gyms. It is extremely important, especially when it comes down to trying to hold long enough to get your daily 50 coins. Now that being said though, don't only focus on healing up yourself, heal up your homies as well. This is honestly really important. I feel like a lot of people don't do this. Like you would be surprised. Some people only golden raspberry themselves. And uh, again, guys, it's a team effort. I always golden raspberry everybody if I can. Like I always try to have at least about a hundred golden raspberries in my inventory. I would recommend anywhere from like maybe 30 to 50, you know, especially if you're just starting out, that's a good amount to have and you can definitely secure your place in a gym, especially from somebody who's like trying desperately to kick you out. Like you can kill their motivation. There have been people that have been just so good at gym defense. I get sick and tired of it and I just leave. So some people are more persistent than others, but after a while, somebody decides this isn't worth my time. I'm going to go find another gym and try to kick them out. So basically to sum it up, just try to kill their motivation with your gym defense before they take down your motivation. Moving on over to our next tip, I'm going to recommend to walk one kilometer buddies for an easy candy farm. So again, we already talked about this earlier on like Pidgey, Caterpie, Weedle, Wormpole. You also have Pokemon like Gyarados or Magikarp. Uh, Clefairy is a really good one to walk. Clefairy is actually, sorry, Clefable is really good in Ultra League and Pokemon Go. So definitely a good Pokemon. Pokemon to build up candy for to power up and also unlock the second charge move. We'll talk about secondary charge moves a little bit later. There's actually a small tip I want to give you guys on that. Um, following that though, the next tip is going to be to only power up Pokemon when you need them. This is a very crucial tip that a lot of people do not utilize. Like seriously guys, I always do this. So let's say for example, Dialga's in rotation. This would be an excellent time to invest into your ground type Pokemon. So if you don't already have a team of six, uh, Garchomp at level 30, now would be a good time to do that. But do you need to build up your Garchomp before Dialga comes into rotation? Probably not. So that's what I'm trying to say here. Only power up things when you absolutely need to use them. More specifically, when it comes down to raids or gym battles, or even PvP, I guess you could say. Following that, I literally just touched on this, but the level 30 baseline for power ups is going to be essential. Simply put, the way that I look at it is that level 40 is the max level in game, level 50 is like over leveling your Pokemon. So 90% of a Pokemon's maximum potential at level 40 is going to be at level 30. This is going to be a great, great method to save yourself some Stardust, get your Pokemon powered up so that they're actually doing a decent amount of damage. And uh, yeah, you know, the power ups from level 30 to level 40 are going to cost so much in terms of candy and Stardust. You might as well just do yourself a favor, focus on the level 30 baseline, and then you can progressively power them up in the future as you continue moving forward. But level 30 should always be where you stop powering up a Pokemon and decide if you want to continue moving forward or if you want to work on something else. Again, as a free-to-play player, your resources are more limited compared to pay-to-play players. Make sure that you're not wasting them. In addition to that though, we're also going to talk about level 30 to level 35 weather boosted Pokemon. These are extremely good investments. They save you so much Stardust and we already talked about the level 30 baseline. If you catch a Pokemon at level 35 and you just can evolve it and use that Pokemon in battle, dude, like you just saved so much Stardust, so much candy. Let's say for example, you caught a Rhyhorn at level 35 and you want to evolve it into Rhyperior, but the IVs aren't actually that good on it then you also have a 90% Rhyperior at level 20. Which one should you prioritize investing into? I would actually recommend investing into that level 35 because that Pokemon is going to be battle ready, especially if you're limited on resources. You can evolve that Rhyhorn into Rhyperior. Once you get the right moveset on it, let's say you're going for a ground type moveset, uh, Mudslap and Earthquake, right? That Pokemon is battle ready, opposed to that 90% Rhyperior below, which you're going to have to spend a ton of Stardust to get it all the way from level 20 to level 35, or even level 30 for that matter. I'm not saying you shouldn't invest into that Pokemon, but I am saying that that level 35 Rhyhorn is going to save you so much time and effort and energy and just overall resources, so if you can catch level 30 to level 35 weather boosted Pokemon and they're actually meta relevant, you're going to be solid. And for those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar with how the leveling system works, essentially level 20 is going to be about 2,500 Stardust to power up. Level 25 is going to be about 4,000 Stardust to power up. Level 30 is going to be 5,000 Stardust to power up. 
and level 35 is going to be 8,000 Stardust to power up. You guys can use those metrics to kind of figure out where your Pokemon is, respectively by their level. And of course, while we're still on investments here, lucky Pokemon are going to be excellent investments. In order to get lucky Pokemon in game, you have to trade with other people. Um, you could also get to lucky friend status after you hit best friends with somebody, so that's going to be a random chance to get lucky friends. That's going to be a guaranteed lucky trade. I have a video that probably goes over this in more detail if you guys want to check that out. Again, links are always going to be in the description. I keep saying that, but you guys get the drill at this point. Um, lucky Pokemon, though, cost half the Stardust to power up a Pokemon, which is incredible. So, you know how I was talking about investments? Uh, so let's say a Pokemon's at level 30, it would normally cost you about 5,000 Stardust to power it up. A lucky Pokemon at level 30 is going to cost you 2,500 Stardust to power up. So yeah, that is a significant benefit right there. And guys, lucky Pokemon actually have a minimum base IV of 12, 12, 12. So lucky Pokemon are always going to be an excellent investment, even if they don't have the best IVs. And that actually brings me on over to my next tip. Don't overstress about IVs all the time, especially in the beginning. The most important thing to consider is that base stats are always going to be way more important compared to IVs. You know, I have videos that go over the top meta Pokemon in game, you know, links in the description as always, guys. Um, but these are great investment picks, and at the end of the day, even if you don't get 100% IVs or you get something of 15 attack, like let's say, for example, you get a really good lucky Pokemon that's meta relevant, you know, in the beginning, guys, it's okay to invest into those Pokemon. You can work on building out your teams better later on. Um, but again, if you focus in all of those things that I just mentioned with a level 30 baseline, catching weather boosted Pokemon, getting lucky versions of those weather boosted Pokemon, you know, even if a Pokemon comes out with like 12, 12, 12, like the lowest IV roll from that lucky trade, it's still probably worth investing into. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying that IVs don't matter. They definitely do matter, and I would highly recommend trying to get good IV Pokemon, but I wouldn't overstress it, especially in the beginning. Okay, moving on over to our next tip. This one is gonna be uh, kind of a controversial one, I guess, among free-to-play players, but get an auto-catcher. In my opinion, I really don't consider an auto-catcher like a significant advantage over somebody who doesn't. Like, quite honestly, somebody who doesn't have an auto-catcher is probably catching Pokemon more consistently than somebody who does have an auto-catcher. Go Plus is going to to be a great convenience like if you're in the supermarket and obviously you don't want to be looking at pokemon go right now your pokemon go plus can just auto catch for you while you're doing your groceries it is honestly amazing now with that being said of course you have a lot of different auto catchers uh the official auto catchers from pokemon go are going to be the pokemon go plus and then also the Pokeball Plus. Uh, both of these are a little bit more expensive now online, but these are the official versions of the auto catchers. You also have the third party versions of the auto catchers like the Gacha, the Gacha Evolve, the Dual Catchmon, etc. Um, again, these are all technically against the terms of service. But to be honest, a lot of players still use them, and then even Trainer Club, who's actually been partnered with Niantic before, he's actually gotten a deal with the Gotcha, so he has his own exclusive Gotcha, and uh, if he kind of has that going for him, then I'm not really sure how to feel about this being against the terms of service or, you know, third party or whatever. You know, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. It's up to you if you want to buy them over the official Go Plus. I personally just use the official Go Plus. I don't risk it as much. Um, but I'll leave links to everything in the description below. You guys can uh, check out which one you feel is going to be the best. If you guys want me to do reviews on these auto catchers, I definitely can. So next up, we have take advantage of search tags to stay organized. As a free-to-play player, organization is key to success. I cannot stress this enough. Um, I actually have a video that goes over the best search tags to use in Pokemon Go. Of course, you guys know where to find that. With that being said, though, I do plan on making an update video to that video very soon just because there's a lot of different changes that have happened in Pokemon Go, so I feel like I can expand on that one a little bit more. But for now, definitely check out the video that I currently have up. The next tip I have for you guys is going to be to claim your daily free box in the shop. This usually gives you like anywhere from two to three Pokeballs, from a potion uh, to maybe a revive in there. I don't know, it's always randomized. You might even get a great ball at times. Um, but yeah, just get your daily free box. There's no reason not to. <laughs> and on that note too, make sure you're claiming your weekly free remote raid pass from the shop. This also comes in box form, so you guys got to go into the in-game shop, claim it. It's going to say it's free. And yeah, there's really no reason not to, guys. Um, additionally, on top of that, I would also recommend buying the remote raid pass bundle, the 250 for 3 opposed to the 100 for 1. You save 50 Pokecoins by buying the 3 remote raid passes. You can only hold up to, I believe, 5 remote raid passes in your inventory at one time. There are some ways to get around this, like if you ended up getting it from a research breakthrough, that'll actually stack on top of it. But generally speaking, if you try to buy remote raid passes, like let's say you already have 3 in your inventory, 
The game will not let you. If you have two in your inventory, you can buy three more and it'll let you hold up to five. But essentially for the time being, you can only buy remote raid passes in a group of three or potentially just one by itself. Um, so yeah, I would always just recommend buying the three because you can save 50 Poke Coins just like that. And in general, I would also recommend just trying to buy in bulk whenever you can. Like for example, we can use Lucky Eggs as another example here. So one Lucky Egg is going to cost you 80 coins. Um, eight Lucky Eggs is going to cost you 500 coins. You can already see that you're going to save a decent amount of Poke Coins just by doing that alone. Same can be said for incense or for lure modules and unfortunately they actually had a 25 pack for lucky eggs in the past but Niantic got rid of that because money yeah that, that kind of sucks I actually bought that a few times early on uh, when I was a free-to-play player so I'm happy that I did because it made you know getting experience a lot easier but then again you know getting experience these days isn't isn't so bad the next tip I have for you guys is going to be to use Poke Genie to join raids so this is arguably the best way to get your raids done in game especially if you do have remote raid passes like we just talked about this use Poke Genie I have a guide on the channel links in the description like usual guys um, additionally though I'd also recommend using Poke Genie to host raids so as a free-to-play player you're going to be going to raids in person quite often to use your free remote raid pass. I'm sorry, your free passes. I'm going to say free remote raid passes to use your free orange passes. And uh, from hosting raids, you can actually get an extra 15,000 experience from friendship bonuses from those random people that you add in Poke Genie. And you're going to get a total of 25,000 experience if you weren't on a lucky egg just from that alone. If you are in a Lucky Egg and you did like two back-to-back -back raids, that is 100,000 experience from two raids from Poke Genie. Incredible. Like, honestly, it is incredible. But even if you don't use a Lucky Egg, that's still 25,000 experience just for getting your daily raid done. 50,000 if you get both of them done in the same day. All right, moving on over to the next tip here. It is going to be the Melton Box. So Melton Boxes reset every three days. Essentially, it works the same way as incense spawns do. Melmetal is an extremely good Pokemon in PvP, in raids, in, sorry, not raids, in uh, Rocket Leader battles. Um, that's what I was thinking of. And uh, I do recommend focusing on Melmetal at some point in your Pokemon Go career, whether you have that now or you just are trying to get one good for PvP or for Rocket Battles, whatever the case may be, guys. So yeah, I definitely do recommend taking advantage of Melton Boxes. It's basically just a free incense every three days. Um, I will make a walkthrough video on this in the future. I honestly haven't felt the need to do it, but I know some people do have trouble kind of figuring out how to get Melton Boxes. There's two ways, essentially. You can either get it from Pokemon Home, which is like the easiest way. You don't need a Switch or anything like that. And the second way is to get it from Pokemon Let's Go Eevee or Let's Go Pikachu. In order to get it from Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, you have to get all the way to Fuchsia City, which is the sixth gem leader, and then you can go into where the Safari Zone used to be, and you guys can do the Go Transfer from there. Um, I usually do that one to get my Melton Boxes, but of course, Pokemon Home's even easier, and I can do a separate video that goes over both methods if you guys want me to. Moving on over to our next tip, though, because we have a lot to get through in this video still, quick delete items in your bag. So basically how this works is that you click on the trash icon next to your item, like let's say you have Pokemon potions. If you click on the minus icon once initially, it's going to go from one all the way to the max amount of items that you currently have for that respective item. So let's say I had 29 potions. If I click on the minus, it's going to go all the way to 29 immediately. This allows you to quick delete items very easily. And quite honestly, it's such a big time saver, especially if you don't have that much uh, bag space, you know. If you're trying to stock up on a lot of Pokeballs, you really just want to go through and quick delete them, not click on the plus icon a million times or hold the plus icon down. It is so much faster to just click on the minus icon, delete your items, and keep moving forward. Following that, our next tip is going to be to play with a friend if you can. Or, another tip, uh, get a cheap second device on the low key and make it alt. So this is not something that I would recommend telling people about or at least openly bragging about. Alts are against the terms of service. Second devices are also against the terms of service technically, but a lot of people do it, a lot of top level players do it, and honestly I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't do it or you should do it, I'm just going to say if you do it, do it on the low key. The reason I say this is because a lot of the aspects of Pokemon Go kind of revolve around trading or just getting better IVs through trading or getting candy through trading or doing your special trades or whatever it may be, right? You can definitely get a lot of advantages from trading in game. Moving forward though, the next one is going to be to do your daily special trades if possible guys trade your legendaries like always do your special trades and trade your legendaries especially if you're best friends with somebody this is definitely one of the best ways to get hundos in game is to do it through trades like especially if you have lucky trades with somebody and you guys both trade shinies or you trade legendaries you have a higher chance of getting a hundo that way opposed to actually getting it from the raid which is quite interesting but yeah 
Do your daily special trades if you can. You only get one per day. Might as well use it. I'd also recommend swapping rares and legendary Pokemon in general, right? So we already talked about legendary Pokemon from special trades, but just in general, you know, if you have somebody to play with or if you have your alt account, you can always just swap rares. And ideally, this is going to be the best way to get better IV Pokemon for those respective rares or whatever it is that you're going for, maybe even like PvP IVs. You can reroll the IVs to try and get lower IV spreads uh, with low attack and high defense and high HP, ideally. And yeah, kind of a win-win. All right, moving on over to the next tip, we have build your own battle party. So do not use the recommended, guys. Recommended is the worst. I have a video that goes over why you shouldn't use recommended and also how to build battle party. So again, a link in the description below. Next up, we have use the three star and four star filters to check for good IVs and hundos. Very, very important. Not everyone does this. You definitely should do this because I can tell you right now, if I didn't use the four star filter to find hundos, I would have definitely transferred hundos in the past. So yeah, it actually happens. Like you'll just randomly catch a hundo. It could be just like a super common Pokemon that you literally don't care about whatsoever, but it's a 100% IV. So yeah, you know, definitely make sure that you're checking that uh, before you transfer your Pokemon. Additionally though, for PvP IVs, it's gonna work a little bit differently. So I recommend using Ghost Stadium. The link to their website is gonna be in the description below. They also put out amazing infographs, which I also have the link to their Twitter page. I recommend checking them out, give them a follow. Once again, I have a video that goes over PvP IVs in more detail. I highly recommend watching that before kind of diving into PvP itself because it is really important to understand why PvP IVs are so good. Moving away from IVs though, let's talk about the Mega Evolve bonus. So Mega Evolves are kind of weird in Pokemon Go. Mega Evolutions are definitely along the pay-to-play side of this game, but you can still get it done as a free-to-play player. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer. So first things first though, the Mega Evolve bonus actually gives you plus one candy per catch for that respective typing. So what I did during Gibblecom day is I Mega Evolved my Charizard to Mega Charizard, and this lasts about eight hours. And so I got plus one candy for every dragon type Pokemon that I caught because Mega Charizard X is a fire type and a dragon type. So if I caught fire type Pokemon, I'd get plus one candy. If I caught dragon type Pokemon, I'd get plus one candy. This is essentially the same way for any other Mega Evolution in game. So if you wanted plus one dark type candy, Mega Houndoom would be a good choice. If you wanted plus one ghost type candy, Mega Gengar is a good choice. You guys get the point. Now, of course, the main way to get Mega Energy is going to be through raids. So if you guys have an extra raid pass, you can definitely go ahead and host one through Poke Genie. That's probably going to be your best way to just get Mega Energy just from the raid. You can also get Mega Energy from research tasks, though, and this is actually how I've been doing it. Um, of course, there's also the referral program, which gives you a ridiculous amount of Charizard Mega Energy, but we'll talk about that later on in this video. Final tip, though, in regards to Mega Pokemon is that once you actually have them registered, if you walk them as your buddy, you're going to get free Mega Energy just for walking the Pokemon. So again, this is definitely a great incentive to get those Mega Pokemon registered into your Pokedex, because then you can just get Mega Energy from walking them, and that's honestly amazing. Oh, and also, if you Mega Evolve a Pokemon a certain amount of times, it requires less Mega Energy to evolve it in the future. So yeah, another big benefit right there. Mega Evolutions are kind of a tricky place in-game. A lot of people don't really like them, but they do honestly function pretty well the more you kind of dive into it. So I definitely do recommend trying to get your Mega Energy through research tasks, or even just if you have an extra raid pass throughout the day. Uh, that's a great way to do it. And then from there, once you Mega Evolve it once, just walk it as your buddy, get Mega Energy that way. Once you do it, I think two or three times afterwards, then the mega energy to evolve that Pokemon will be less. So yeah, that's essentially my recommendation there. Moving on over to Rocket Battles. So yeah, do your Rocket Battles, guys. 500 Stardust per completion, easy dust. Rocket Leaders, on the other hand, are a little bit tougher. So, you know, make sure you have a good strategy going into it. Plenty of potions and revives. That is my recommendation, because you don't know how long it's going to take you to beat that Rocket Leader. Shadows are also a little bit feisty when they attack, so I would recommend using Nana Berries or using the Circle Lock method. That's kind of the go-to. You might not have too many Pokeballs going into that encounter. Of course, the next tip there is going to be to try and complete as many Rocket Battles as you can. And then also, uh, try not to let your Pokemon faint during those Rocket Battles. The amount of Premier Balls that you get when catching a Pokemon is determined based on your faints and then also the tier of your medals. So if you have the Purifier medal completed, or if you have it at like 100, which is I think tier two, the silver medal, you're going to get two extra Premier Balls for that. And then also if you've beaten like 100 Team Go Rocket Grunts, you're gonna get two extra Premier Balls for that. And then progressively, if you get each of those to gold, you're gonna get one extra Premier Ball each. And I think the same can be said if you get on the Platinum too. So if you wanna get more Premier Balls for the Rocket uh, Battle Encounters, try and get those medals done and try not to let your Pokemon faint. In addition to that though, Shadow Pokemon are definitely really solid for PvP and raids, so make sure to tag them for TM frustration events, 
If you notice on the Shadow Pokemon, they're going to have the move Frustration. This is not able to be TM'd unless it's actually during a specific event. So you're definitely going to have to hold on to those for quite some time before they're actually usable in game. You can't even use an Elite TM on them, which really sucks. Um, but yeah, definitely stockpile a bunch of charged TMs and get them ready to TM Frustration on a ridiculous amount of Pokemon. I cannot stress that enough. The next tip that I have for you guys in regards to Shadow Pokemon or just Rocket Battles in general is to carry over your Super Rocket Radar from the Giovanni Special Research when you can and save any Super Rocket Radars from Timed Research whenever that's available. Earlier this year, we actually had two different timed research, which is different than the special research. Timed research is only available for a certain amount of time. I know given the name, that's probably self-explanatory, but essentially you want to make sure that you get that super rocket radar. Do not use it on the shadow legendary that's currently in rotation. Hold on to that super rocket radar for a better shadow legendary later down the line. Now, of course, that's assuming that the shadow legendary currently isn't meta relevant. So the most recent rotations were Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and then we had Ho-Oh basically the entire summer. So. I wasn't the biggest advocate for Ho-Oh, I didn't really think it was that great of a shadow. I have an analysis on it if you guys want to watch it. Um, but Articuno, kind of whatever. Zapdos is decent, uh, but Moltres is worth it. Moltres is definitely worth it. Um, but Mewtwo. Mewtwo is kind of like the go-to. Like, I'm saving my Super Rocket Radars for Mewtwo, and hopefully some of you guys are as well who've been watching my videos. We have no idea when Shadow Mewtwo is going to come back into rotation, but I'm telling you right now, it is totally going to be worth it. Following that, though, the next tip I have for you guys is going to be in regards to Purification. So we already talked about the Purification in regards to the Metal, so I'm not going to talk about that again. But when you actually purify a Pokemon, it goes to level 25 automatically. So this is a great way to actually get some budget Pokemon early on in game. But the downside to this is that, of course, it loses its shadow bonus. So you have to be really careful that you're not purifying a Pokemon that would otherwise be so much more powerful in its shadow form. So like I previously said, it's a great budget option. But you just got to be really careful that you don't purify something that's, you know, effectively better as a shadow. Um, ideally, I'd also focus on 1000 dust purifications, Pokemon like Zubat or Poochyanna. Uh, following that, our next tip is going to be to double move baby Pokemon. So this is actually really good for PvP. In their baby forms, it only costs you about 10,000 Stardust and 25 Candy to get their secondary charge moves. The next tip that I want to focus on is getting your buddy excited without Poffin. So Poffins is essentially the pay to play, pay to win version of this. And uh, you could actually get your buddy excited, which is going to reduce the amount of distance it takes to walk to get a candy. It's going to get you mega energy faster. And essentially, you can actually get more hearts on your buddy, so faster way to get it to best buddy status, which again, that also has its additional benefits as well. But essentially, the excitement level is going to be 32 to get it excited. I would recommend giving it a berry, interacting with it, essentially just like rubbing it around. I know that sounds super weird, but you just have to rub the screen. Um, then take a picture, battle with it, um, and then also walk with it if you can. And then you want to repeat this every 30 minutes, and you should get it excited within about two hours. So that's pretty solid right there. Um, if you want to check out the best buddy calculator, kind of see like where you're at in terms of getting the best buddy, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Following that, another great reason to get your buddy to at least to great buddy status is that you're going to get access to buddy assist. So let's say for example, you throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon and you completely miss. Sometimes that Pokeball will actually bounce off the Pokemon, then bounce off your buddy, and then it'll actually catch the Pokemon. So that comes in handy quite often. And I would definitely recommend getting your buddies to at least great buddy status to get access to that feature. Now, of course, if you've sent all your gifts as well, another cool feature from the buddy system is that sometimes your buddy will actually bring you five gifts. With the COVID bonuses, we actually had this happen quite often, but since the COVID bonuses were removed in New Zealand and the US, we no longer have the frequency of this. But for the rest of you in the you know remainder of the world, um, you guys can definitely utilize this feature if you don't already know about it. So make sure that you are sending out gifts to your friends. If you have no gifts in your inventory, you can get up to five gifts, which is fantastic. And then following that, of course, we have free poffins from AR mapping tasks. Now this one, I wanna go into it a little bit more detail just because this does actually benefit Niantic. So it is your call if you actually want to go through and do this. The reason I have mixed feelings about this one though is because this is essentially you doing Niantic's dirty work. I mean, Niantic is legally obligated to make sure that Pokestops are about 40 meters away from single family residences, and by doing air mapping tasks, you're essentially just doing the grunt work for them. So at the end of the day, you're getting poffins out of it. I think that's kind of worth it, but at the same time, it could also remove Pokestops. There's definitely a lot of give and takes here. So I'll let you guys decide on whether or not you think that's worth it, but moving on. So next up, we have daily catch and spin streaks. I would recommend lining these up with your adventure sick rewards on Mondays. And I guess the next step is really just do your adventure sick rewards. Um, it's about 50 kilometers a week to to walk. The rewards are actually pretty good. You get a 10 kilometer egg or even a five kilometer egg 
and uh, those usually have good Pokemon. Like they're guaranteed to have good Pokemon in those. Getting 50 kilometers a week is definitely a good challenge for anybody who's trying to just work on their health. So I do recommend doing that as well. It's actually really funny because most of the time I end up not getting the 50 kilometers a week, but I do recommend doing it if you can. All right, next up we have catch second and third stage evolutions. This is gonna give you more Stardust per catch and it's also gonna give you extra large candy guaranteed if you're level 40 or above. So if you definitely see an evolved Pokemon in the wild, whether that's second stage or third stage, for example, if you see like a Laron in the wild, that's second stage. If you see an Aggron in the wild, that's third stage. Make sure you catch it. That is easy Stardust and extra large candy guaranteed, man. No reason not to do it. Following that, the next tip is gonna be to do your research tasks. So the easy way to get free items and free Stardust, self-explanatory. Now following the research task is actually gonna be how you get stamps for the research breakthrough box, which is again, something I definitely recommend taking advantage of. There's gonna be an exclusive Pokemon every single month. In the past, we've actually got a legendary Pokemon in these. We haven't gotten legendary Pokemon recently, but you still get decent rewards. You still get a couple thousand Stardust, sometimes some rare candy and uh, some XP in there as well. So no reason not to get your daily research tasks done if you can. So that one's definitely more or less kind of straightforward there. Uh, but following that, we're gonna talk about the referral program a little bit here. So. This is great for new or returning players. Uh, you get amazing rewards for both parties, whether or not you're the referral or the new player joining the game. Uh, you guys can use my referral code in the comment section down below if you want to. You could also use your friend's referral code. I've actually done about 160 referrals in the game so far, which is pretty impressive considering that I haven't done too much promotion for it. Like I don't tell people about it on social media. It's literally just in my description if you guys wanna use it. It's a win-win for both of us. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it it's great. Honestly, you get incubators from it, you get free raid passes, from it. You get Pokemon encounters like rare encounters too, like Darumaka, Charizard, Dino, Gibble. It is definitely worth it, and I do recommend whether using mine or using somebody else's. If you're a new or returning player, definitely take advantage of the referral program. All right, following that, we have Silver Pineup Berries. So we kind of talked about Pineup Berries earlier on in this video, but Silver Pineup Berries actually give you double candy plus one and they're gonna be a better catch rate. So this is actually really good for legendary Pokemon. And I definitely recommend saving them for legendary Pokemon that you really wanna focus on candy grinding like Mewtwo or Dialga or something along those lines. Following that though, in regards to legendary Pokemon, another great tip is going to be to have a varied legendary roster. So this actually kind of falls in line with the candy struggles, especially early on. So a good example of this is that there's a ton of really good fire type legendaries in the game, right? So we have Entei, we have Reshiram, we have Moltres. So ideally, it's gonna probably be a little bit more difficult to get the candy for like six Reshiram. But let's say for example, Reshiram comes into rotation and you get a few good ones, and then Moltres comes into rotation and you get a few good ones. You're gonna get candy when you catch those Pokemon, especially if you Pineup Berry them or you Silver Pineup Berry them. So you're gonna have more candy essentially for one legendary Pokemon, but maybe not enough to power up like multiple of that legendary Pokemon, if you guys get what I'm saying here. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to power up one Reshiram from that first rotation and then one Moltres from that second rotation opposed to maybe trying to power up like three rush ram because you're gonna have to dive into your rare candy there whereas you were already kind of accumulating candy from catching that pokemon anyways so yeah you kind of already have some candy built up so that is just a small strategy right there honestly um it's just if you're struggling with candy there's a lot of great ways to get rare candy in game like we already talked about go battle league excellent way to get rare candy to be honest at this point in the game rare candy isn't as difficult as it was to get before so I feel like you're not gonna run into the struggle too often, and if you do, well, you know, like I said earlier on, only power up Pokemon when you need them. So following that tip, the next one is going to be to trade evolve Pokemon to save candy. So this is actually a great way to save candy on like really meta Pokemon like Machamp or Gengar. So essentially, if you trade them and then you evolve them to their second evolution, so Machoke or Haunter, if you traded them, it's not gonna cost you any candy to evolve them. Whereas if you just evolved them without trading them, it's gonna cost you 100 candy to evolve them from Haunter to Gengar or Machoke to Machamp. If you traded them, it's gonna cost you zero candy to evolve from Machoke to Machamp or Haunter to Gengar. So that is a great way to take advantage and just save some candy right there. You can focus on using that candy for power-ups or for secondary charge moves. I go over more budget options like this in my budget list video. Again, linked in the description below. Who saw that coming, right? Moving on over to our last two tips of the video. If you don't have 10 lucky Pokemon yet, you can actually get up to 10 guaranteed lucky Pokemon by trading 2016 Pokemon. So if you guys are returning players coming back from 2016 and you don't have 10 lucky Pokemon in the game yet, you can trade your 2016 Pokemon 
Pokemon with somebody that you play Pokemon Go with now, and uh, they can give you something like really good, like a Mewtwo. You trade them a 2016 Pokemon and it's guaranteed lucky on your side. So really, really recommend taking advantage of this if you guys have not done so already. If you already have 10 lucky Pokemon, I'm sorry it's not going to work for you, but uh, yeah, for returning players, it is definitely really amazing. And then finally, the last tip of this video, kind of the most straightforward one, is to have fun, guys. Enjoy the journey, honestly. While this is temporary for some players, this playstyle is very rewarding for those of you who stick it out. Like I said, I've been doing this from the very beginning. I haven't gone from pay to play to free to play. I've been free to play the entire time. So again, you know, have fun with it. It's going to be a slower process compared to pay to play players, but it is totally worth it. Your achievements mean so much more. Not to devalue what pay to play players do, their achievements are also very amazing as well. It is going to take you significantly longer to max out a legendary Pokemon, and once you do, you feel on top of the world. Like, to get to a legendary maxed out Pokemon is not an easy thing to do as a free to play player, so feel accomplished and feel proud of yourself once you get that done. But yeah, guys, that is essentially everything I have for you in this video. Holy crap, it took me like two hours to film this. I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing right now. If you guys have not done so already, please make sure to hit that like button down below. It would mean so much to me. Like, I spent so much time and effort making this video. This is definitely one of the most time-consuming videos I've worked on on the channel in a really long time, so I really do hope that you guys appreciate it. Watch some of the other videos I have on the channel. Like, literally, I probably linked like 20 videos in the description below. Check out those videos. Check out the playlists. And uh, overall, I hope you learned something from this. If you came into this already knowing a bunch, I really just hope that you came out of this video learning at least one thing, maybe even two things. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you think I missed anything. Honestly, I kind of feel like I got everything, but I could have missed something. Could have missed something that I didn't go over here. So let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. My voice is dying. I'm going to go grab some water, and I will see you all real soon in the next one.